but there are some things I think you would be interested in. One, as I was raised in Durban, uh, in Natal, or Natal Zululand as it's called today, I uh, came from a working class family. My father was a plumber and he uh, had a local business, which is a one-man operation. I went to a um, Catholic school and the reason I went to the Catholic school was my dad wanted to get the maintenance of all the Catholic properties in Durban and being a good Presbyterian he figured that was a good way to get in so he put his son in the sacrificed into the Roman Catholic school by the way and they treated me quite well. I fell in love with one of the nuns then, told her when I grew up I was going to marry her. So she uh, did get a proposal. That's something she got. And then, but on the Christian or religious front, because our family thought they were Christians, but in actual fact were never. We had a Bible on the mantelpiece, I can remember from a very young fellow. And once a month, the uh, elder of the Presbyterian Church from Gravel would pitch up to collect some money. I think it was called Sustination Fund or some silly thing like that. And that was always a problem because my dad hated giving this money, but he was obligated. And uh, if he didn't give it, my grandmother would be upset and there'd be a big upheaval. So uh, when he came, we all had to have a bath, get cleaned, and the three children, because they had a, a brother and a sister, we'd sit on the couch in the lounge, not move, and had to wait for this old elder to get his money and then pray over us, and then off he walked. And then we all went back to normal, okay? So, and the Bible on the mantelpiece was to indicate to him that we read the Bible. We never did. Uh, and I tried to read it surreptitiously without much success. It was he begat, they begat, she begat, they begat. I thought those people just kept begetting and I gave it all up. But <clears throat> the family, in spite of all our religious activities, there was a division because my mother was Anglican and my father was Presbyterian and I'm going to a Catholic school and I got baptized as a baby and confirmed at about 12 in the Presbyterian church but my mother never felt that was kosher so what she did was she arranged with the Bishop of Natal that when he came down to Durban because he was stationed 50 miles away in Peter Morrisburg the next time he came down to Durban, he would uh, baptize me and I'd also get confirmed when I was 12 and that's what duly happened. Well, uh, in the Presbyterian Church you had confirmation classes where they explained what the church uh, believed and didn't believe and what have you. And I thought, well, when I get confirmed, something will happen. Then I'll come to terms with whatever it is. Well, nothing worked. And I told my mother, I said, I'm not going to Sunday school, I'm not going to church. Uh, there's nothing there, really. And she explained to me it was because I'd gone to the Presbyterians and they've got nothing. You must get confirmed in the Anglican Church. So I then got confirmed in the Anglican Church and once again, nothing happened. So I'd be about 12, 14 years of age when this took place. And I, I stopped going to church. And I just lived a normal boy's life, except that I was an extremely angry person because at the age of six, I, I had a stroke. And the reason I had a stroke at six was simply because my dad uh, would drink a bit and there'd be a great tension and I was always trying to protect my younger brother and so my life was really tense and nobody understood I had a stroke what they presumed was I'd had polio because there was a polio epidemic at the time and so I got no treatment I had nothing it just had to come right on its own I guess but I uh, I had one, on, one leg and one arm that wouldn't work properly, but I wanted to play soccer, so I had to develop my leg, and if you want to have a look at it, it works quite normally, and uh, scored a few goals with the it. The fact that I had the stroke created within me a deep-seated anger, 
because what happened, my grandfather came to see me when I was lying in bed. And he looked at my father and said, Roy, we cannot tell why the Lord would lay it on the laddie. And from that I understood it was God that attacked me. And it was God's fault. It was God that gave me this, uh, what we thought was polio. It was God that didn't like me. It was God that hammered me. And, uh, and I saw God as an enemy. He was my enemy. And so if I could do anything to discredit God, I would do that. The difficulty I had, though, was the only ones that ever showed me any love were the Roman Catholic nuns. They were gentle and kind and sweet, and they believed in this God who was my enemy. So I grew up with a mixture of hatred and a mixture of, of respect for people that knew God, and it was a very confusing time for me. Uh, we were, incidentally, I should also mention, we were isolated here in Durban, in that all the Scots lived in Red Hill, uh, basically, or on the Brea, and then the Irish lived in another area, and the English lived in another area, and it was like a big cultural difference. Like today, uh, it's all mixed, but in my day, uh, you knew who your great-great-great-grandfather, you may never have met him, but you heard the story, you knew which families you could safely mix with and who were not to be trusted. I remember, and I, uh, I, I say this carefully, the Campbells, my grandfather always told me, never do a deal with the Campbells, never. And one day I plucked up courage and asked him why. He said, they're sheep stealers, sheep stealers. And I looked at him and I said, but we don't have sheep. How could they steal our sheep? I he said, they did. In 1620, they came across the border and they took our sheep. And so you get brought up with that kind of bit of isolation, you know, and judgment. And uh, it makes me think of, um, you know, where Jesus spoke and he said, I'll put enmity between two seeds. And I'm amazed how that enmity is always there, how we don't trust one another, believe one another, and, uh, and how difficult. So when later on in life, God called me to go to other nations, it required God to change my thinking, my heart, my attitude, uh, and become what I call Christian more than South African, become... Uh, Christian more than Scottish, become Christian more than any other thing. And I'm noticing today that's one of the big discussions that are going on in our present society is uh, like the Muslim faith. Are you a Briton or a Muslim? Which has got priority? And so really nothing has changed. It's the same difference as far as I'm concerned. So that's a little bit of that, the background.